Each year, we add 11 gigatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Scientists agree that the upper limit of CO2 concentration in the atmosphere should be at 350 parts per million. But currently, Earth's atmosphere is over 410 parts per million of CO2. Even in the far-fetched scenario that we reduce our emissions to zero, this excess CO2 will last for hundreds of years and generate significant climate change. To secure a sustainable future, we must use technologies that extract the excess CO2. Tropical reforestation is the only affordable, effective, proven, and safe strategy we have. When you have a carbon footprint through the use of uh, fuels, through the use of electricity, and you want to do something to mitigate or compensate those fuel emissions, planting trees would do that. Let me tell you a little bit about Reforest the Tropics. It's a project that I've been working on for over 50 years now, and we've achieved some success, I'd say, in learning how to take carbon dioxide out of the air. Reforest the Tropics is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to planting uh, tropical forests for the purpose of carbon sequestration. Right now, we have something like 410 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. And we have climate change. Few people doubt it any longer. Every developed country is working on reducing their emissions. Things we do every day result in carbon dioxide emissions, which stay in the atmosphere for hundreds of years. Fossil fuels, coal, gas, oil, burning of those adds a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere every year. It's a little bit over 400 parts per million now. It probably should be no more than 350 or so. And we're on a trajectory to get to 500. If you look at the numbers, the amount of carbon dioxide that needs to be removed is very, very substantial. It amounts to somewhere between 100 and 300 billion tons of carbon, which is equivalent to 10 to 30 years worth of global emissions. So it's, it's really an enormous amount. So what our forests do is they're very good at extracting carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and storing it in a tree or in a forest. If you look underneath the leaf, if here's a leaf on a tree and you look underneath it and you have really, really good eyes, you may see some little tiny holes there. And those holes are where the leaf itself absorbs carbon dioxide passively. It then splits, and this part over here ends up being released back into the air and it's the, that oxygen that we need to breathe. And the sea stays in the form, uh, a complicated form of wood. And the wood is actually the carbon part stored up forever if you don't burn the wood or let it rot. Trees basically serve as a sponge which scrub excess carbon out of the atmosphere. Tropical forests are really the only affordable, safe, and proven method to capture and store carbon for the long term. We need all the tools in the toolbox to offset our carbon emissions. Using solar panels is way more expensive than just planting the right tree in the right place on Earth. So what tropical forestry does is it lets us pick the low-hanging fruit to address climate change. What Reforest at the Tropics is doing is interesting because they, they've thought about how to do the reforestation uh, in ways that promote biodiversity and also store carbon. And the other thing that it, that's critical is that they thought about the economic aspect. They thought about generating income for landowners. And, and that's critical in a policy that needs to be sustained for decades. The concept of reforestation is nothing new, but how it's done by Reforest the Tropics really is. In terms of creating a model which maximizes or optimizes 
carbon storage in a given area while trying to generate income for a farmer, while being true to the environment and creating biodiversity, is something that's really never been tried before. We spent some 50 odd years selecting trees that grow very fast. Certainly the clinky tree was one of them. Right now some of our trees are 140 feet tall and the tallest clinky we've ever heard of was 273 feet tall. That's a huge forest giant. Basically every RTT plantation is going to have clinky. This is what we rely on for long-term carbon storage. Another species was a eucalyptus deglupta, a tropical eucalypt, which is a really fast-growing tree. This deglupta here is maybe nine, nine and a half months old. And if you were to plant, you know, any given tree in, in the United States or the temperate zone, you'd expect that size after years, not months. The fast-growing tree would give the farmer some logs he could sell as we thinned out the forest. And the slow-growing tree would be the one, perhaps, that would capture all of this carbon dioxide and store it for a hundred years. So we're mixing these with multiple other native species, including mahogany, botarama, okora, pilone, among others. All this is resulting in biodiversity and is creating new habitat for, for countless animals, including some endangered and threatened species. In the beginning, uh, it wasn't very clear whose land we were going to plant. We didn't know, and I met with a farmer, our first farmer, a guy named Carlos Mano Rojas. When we started talking about reforesting some of our pasture lands in Las Delicias, he mentioned that he was starting with the project of reforest the tropics. And I said, do you want to participate in this project? And he said, well, what does it mean? It means a 30-year contract. We're going to help you plant the forest. It's going to sequester carbon, etc. Et he said, no, 30 years is too long. I said, how about 25? He said, yes. And so now we have roughly 100 hectares with the project. And we may do more in the future. So the farmer has pastures. If we can convert them into a forest that produces valuable wood, what we're going to offer him is a forest that he can thin every five years for some logs and get money out of that. We require our participating landowners to thin their forests periodically. That's important for the overall production of the forest, but also in the thinning process we extract certain logs which can be valuable for the farm. This graph shows you the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the forest. Then we had to give the farmer some income. So we thinned it a bit. And it grew back in there and it went higher, didn't it? And we thinned it again. And it's in the process of growing even more and continuing to store carbon dioxide. We expect to be able to earn as much money from that forest, thinning it every five years, very lightly so that the farmer can make as much money as he can make from cattle. It's this income that allows the farmer to participate in the project for the long term. Here in Costa Rica, we have a lot of competitive advantage to turn forestry or agroforestry into very competitive land uses. Uh, the trees grow all year round. You have biodiversity. We can grow the most expensive wood that there is in the planet, like cedar, mahogany, rosewood. We have a lot of competitive advantage to turn forestry or agroforestry into very competitive land uses and very sustainable ones. Our forest sponsors represent a diverse subset of, of our society. We work with 
individuals. We work with businesses, both large and small. We work with universities. We work with secondary and elementary schools. We have a wide array of partners. I was one of the first supporters of Reforest the Tropics. By 2010, I realized that if I kept planting tropical forests, my company would be 100% carbon balanced. Well, as it turned out, we were 100% carbon balanced uh, by 2013. Reforest the Tropics is the best reforestation project that I know of in the world. It's a win-win situation for the farmers and the emitters. Corporations, municipalities have a moral obligation to reduce their carbon emissions. Some companies have been for years uh, trying to set an example and actually reward their suppliers with preferential treatment. So this year they kept their word and they increased my distribution by 80% in one fell swoop. We need to continue to measure the forest, which we do every year, of course, to determine how much carbon dioxide the forest has captured. As a research organization, we need to know exactly how our forests are performing. So we have a team of RTT foresters who go out and physically measure the trees in each plot. We measure the diameter, we measure the height, and we come out with how much green volume there is in the forest. If you could take a piece of wood uh, out, of, out of a tree, it's green. We bring it to the laboratory, put it into an oven, and we dry it. And scientists tell us that roughly 50% of your dry volume of wood is carbon. They select a statistically valid sample size, measure those trees, and apply it to the entire forest to, to determine how much carbon we've sequestered that year. Independent third-party verification has shown that we are essentially doubling the annual carbon capture of most other reforestation models. In addition, we're able to store that carbon for a much longer period of time. In that tree, there's a lot of carbon stored. Over here, there's very little stored in the grass. So for years now, we have been going into different schools and teaching not only about reforestation, but climate change in general. We established forests. The forests are down there sucking in carbon dioxide, oh, like this. So all of his carbon is being bound. We're calling down to Costa Rica right now with video, and they're out in the field. So we are giving students the opportunity to do a virtual tour of a forest in Costa Rica via a Skype connection. Got a connection. There's Orlando. Why do you have that big knife? Victor, can you explain why you use your machete? I use my machete for my security because of the poison snake. ¿Cuántos árboles tú plantas en un año? En un año serían alrededor de unos 100 árboles. How long have you been planting trees? This is something that the students seem to really respond to and an aspect of the program that we, we'd like to grow. Victor, we're going to say goodbye now. Bye. Bye. Obviamente estamos proclives, anuentes, a desarrollar plantaciones, no tanto solo en la finca del Cate, sino propiciar para que otros propietarios vengan y vean plantaciones como la que tenemos acá y repliquen estos proyectos en sus propiedades y sea pues, un efecto como dominó. Well, what we're doing in Costa Rica is developing and demonstrating and confirming the model. We'd like to make sure that other countries begin to use this model, which is quite unique in the world. Therefore, we would end up with not 100 hectares or 500 hectares, we could end up with 100,000 hectares. That's starting to become significant. We know how much carbon's in the atmosphere. We know how much carbon we're able to sequester through trees. Through massive, wide-scale tropical reforestation by groups like Reforest the Tropics, governments, the business community, and others, our numbers show that we can actually make a material contribution to climate change mitigation. I think there's probably some 60,000 trees that we've planted 
And as I sit here, they're all growing right now. And I'm here, and they're there, but they're growing and capturing carbon on our benefit. 